Hey there, welcome back to OtoNet. Today I want to talk a little bit about the clustering capabilities that were recently added into ArcGIS Online. And you can check out a couple of blog posts about uh, this functionality. Uh, there's one here that looks at a um, general clustering ArcGIS Online. It shows you how you can enable it on your feature services. Uh, there's another really cool blog post on um, how you could use arcade expressions to kind of enhance um, clustering capabilities to you know, put some more data in there, uh, do it all client side. And that's all cool, but I kind of want to show you um, uh, some stuff that you can do with the clusters. Uh, once you've already got your cluster data, um, maybe how you can uh, interact with that data inside of your application. So first off, what you should know is by looking at documentation, um, this is only available in 3x. So if you want to interact with a clustered graphic, the first thing you're going to want to do is to check if that particular graphic is an aggregate. So there is a method on graphic called is aggregate. Now if it is aggregate, now you know that you can do something with those clustered graphics and start um, playing around with them in your application. So what I'm deciding to do is to use a method on the graphic called get child graphics right here. Now, if you look at get child graphics, the documentation is going to tell you that um, you want to use the is aggregate function first to check that the graphic um, is a clustered graphic or an aggregation of points. Now, once you've done that, you can go ahead and start doing the get child graphics. Uh, you may also want to check out documentation on the set feature reduction uh, capabilities, and this is how you can enable the um, uh, clustering inside of your own applications. So maybe if you don't decide not to do it inside of the map viewer in ArcGIS Online, you want to do it manually, you can do that and give you some documentation how to do that here. Uh, also explain some of the limitations applied to that. But realistically, I like to do all of my clustering in online uh, as pointed out in these blog posts and then just use it in my web maps. It just uh, works out much easier for me that way. So, okay, so let's take a look at this little application I built here. Um, I pretty much just took the samples that were available in online, uh, tweaked it a little bit, so you can check out that sample and um, just look at this one here. So what I'm doing here is I bring my web map in, and once that web map is created, I'm going to go ahead and grab the, uh, the first graphic layer, which is going to be my feature service. I'm going to get the layer ID here and then get my layer. All done. Then I go into console, I'll get out because I was being lazy, but it's probably remove that. And now let's go ahead and I'm creating a new graphics layer that's going to hold all of my um, stuff that I'm doing. All right, so I want this to be at the uh, zero index, so it's going to be under the other graphics, uh, correct? And then what I want to do is that on mouse over for the layer, I'm going to clear this graphics layer that I added. I'm going to check if the graphic is aggregate. I'm going to get the graphics that are the child graphics for that aggregate graphic. I'm going to get all the geometries for those graphics, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and create a multi-point uh, geometry from all those. I'm just going to use Geometry Engine to do it. Now I decided to just do multi-points because you'll see why in a minute, but uh, it also made it easier for me to just add the graphic as a multi-point instead of iterating over the graphics, apply symbology, blah, 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 uh, because I need to create new graphics. I don't want to use the gra these graphics and modify them. I want to just use the geometries, and then I want to display those as new graphics on my map. So basically what I'm doing here now is that I create the graphic, add to this layer, is that when I hover over each of these aggregate graphics, I want to show the source graphics for each of these clusters, as you can see here. So as I hover over a, gra a cluster graphic, I'm just showing the source features that make up that particular cluster. That's pretty neat. That's a nice way that you can kind of enhance the functionality of clusters inside of your applications. Uh, but maybe you don't want to show all the, the features. Maybe you want to do something a little different. You want to, you want to you know, make, generalize it a bit more. So what you can do here is you can take advantage of Geometry Engine to create a convex hole of those multipoints. And once you create that convex hole of the multipoints, I can go ahead and create a convex hole graphic. Let's just go ahead and let me comment this one out. Let's do cvh layer dot add. Oops. Sometimes working in code pen. 
uh, things get a little slow with the refreshes. Okay, so now what I'm doing, I'm, take, I'm taking the uh, convex hole geometry that was created from my multipoints, and I'm going to create a new graphic from that convex hole. So now as I hover over these, I'm just show, I'm going to show the convex hole itself instead of the individual graphics that make up each of these clusters. So this is a nice way that you can also interact with the clusters inside of your application. So again, I just uh, was able to figure this out by looking at the documentation, uh, play around with stuff like this. Um, you can go ahead and do some really cool, nice interactive capabilities with the cluster capabilities of the uh, ArcGIS JavaScript API inside of your own custom applications. Thank you. Thank you.